the, the Greek freak. Do you think we re-sign Sanders or roll with Debo and the unproven Jalen Hurd as our top two receivers next season? Very easy for me. I honestly am leaning towards letting Sanders walk. And I talked about this a little bit on the Q&A last week. Has anyone else that been that impressed with Emmanuel Sanders? Like, has Emmanuel Sanders been a game-changing receiver for us in multiple games? There's been a couple where he had over 100 yards. But overall, it's been like four catches for 20 yards, four catches for 50 yards. Like, he's just not been worth what we gave up for him and really not been worth re-signing him for 10 to $12 million. I would let him walk. You have Jalen Hurd coming back. That's like getting a free wide receiver, and we all expect him to be pretty good. Maybe sign somebody in free agency. There's a ton of really good free agents this year in the, uh, the wide receiver class. So I'm actually leaning towards letting Sanders walk unless he balls out in the Super Bowl. And that shouldn't really matter, but if he balls out in the Super Bowl and wins all of our hearts over and we win Super Bowl 54, then maybe we go ahead and re-sign him. So... You know, I'm just not really feeling it overall with Emmanuel Sanders. I thought he'd be better than what he is. He was very exciting first off, but he's kind of fizzled out in my opinion. Um, Gonzalez asks, uh, uh, Sergio Gonzalez, are you, sorry, are our 49ers edge defenders far superior to Kansas City's offensive tackles? If yes, how many sacks do you think we'll have in the Super Bowl? Yes, we are superior. No, we are not far superior. We're superior than any offensive line in terms of our defensive line versus their offensive line. We're superior than anyone in the National Football League. That's not bias. That's a fact. Everyone knows it. We are unbelievably good rushing on the outside. Kansas City, though, not bad. Think of like think like Drew Brees' offensive line. Drew Brees' offensive line, good, not elite. Brees still gave up sacks when we played him, and he gave up sacks when they played the Falcons this year and other teams. It's a good KC offensive line, but we have the edge. I would still, though, put it between three and four sacks. You get more than four, you get five, six, seven of Patty Mahomes, we're winning this game by ten points. If we keep it to three or four, then it'll be the close shootout that we all expected, which we can still win, but obviously not as big of a blowout as if we had six or seven sacks or whatever the number is. Um, Austin Maxwell, what do you think the hardest, I'm sorry, what do you think the hardest thing for 49ers to stop on Casey's offense? Very, very easy. For me, it's Tyreek Hill. Travis Kelsey is fantastic. He's one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. He's the best in the AFC. George Kittle's the best in the NFC. You can stop him by putting a linebacker with the speed of a guy like Fred Warner or Kwan Alexander. Our linebackers are built to cover Travis Kelsey. Our safety's tart. They're really good at covering tight ends. They're going to be able to handle Kelsey. I don't know where we slow down Tyreek Hill or how we slow down Tyreek Hill, Tyree Hill's speed because for as great as Richard Sherman has been, and Pro Football Focus rated Richard Sherman as the number one pass defender in the NFL this year. Number one. Like, that's how good he was this year. But does he have the speed to keep up with Tyreek Hill? You really can't match up one-on-one -on, -one on Tyreek Hill at all. The only way to slow him down is to scheme correctly. So I'm sure that Robert Sala and the secondary and even the linebackers are putting together a game plan focused on Tyreek Hill. That's the one you cannot let break open this football game. Because if Hill catches, you know seven balls for 140 yards and two touchdowns, we're probably going to lose this football game. You can control Kelsey. You can control their running backs. You can honestly even keep Patrick Mahomes in front of you. You can slow him down. He's fantastic, but you can slow him down. The one person that scares me the most, though, is Tyreek Hill overall because we don't have a player that can match his speed. Um, the Prince, great question. We're going to lead into this. We're going to talk about this later. We'll do it right now. Will Devin Coleman be ready to go Sunday? The answer is most likely yes. Here's the deal. Those of you guys did not watch my video the other day, he's dealing with a dislocated shoulder. And so it's very um, it's very lethal weapon style. Have you ever seen lethal weapon with Mel Gibson? His shoulder literally just popped out and they just popped it right back in. But you still have to be kind of worried for uh, worrisome about some soreness some tenderness in the area. So he's not going to be um, having any sort of contact practices. He was seen, though, today at practice doing sideline drills and running without contact. He'll have no contact for about a week. And then most likely on Monday or Tuesday, they'll probably check out that shoulder and see if it's good to go. Kyle Shanahan said that most likely he'll be good to go. He's going to be a game-time decision, but I'd be surprised if Coleman is unable to go on Sunday. Again, he was at practice today. He was not practicing with the team. He was off to the side doing some rehab work. But the fact that he was running with the shoulder, because again, when you run, you got to move your arms like this, you know. So it technically can get a little uh, painful there in the shoulder area if it was bad. But apparently they're saying... It's not a big deal. He should be good to go on Sunday. All right. I see the um, I see the comment section over here. Shout out your city right now. Where are you guys watching from? We do this every single week. I'm fascinated where you guys are watching from right now. Shout out your city in the comment section right now. We'll get to those here in just a second. And also, use the hashtag 49ers to be go ahead and get your questions on the show as we do here every single week. Glad you're with us. Hope you guys have been having a good week. We've been having a lot of fun overall 
really the past couple of weeks. The Niners playoff run's been great here. The channel's been growing at a crazy good rate. We have a great interaction with you guys. And so I'm really excited to see what happens next week if we can win the Super Bowl. I see Odessa, Texas. I have a friend in Odessa, Texas, a local uh, TV anchor. Um, let's see. Uh, Marysville, Tucson, Arizona, Toronto, uh, Winchester, California, Dallas, Sacramento, Toronto, South Dakota. It's probably freezing in South Dakota right now. Um, Orlando, not freezing. Probably probably pretty good. Winnipeg, Toronto, Oregon. Man, you guys got to be cold wherever you guys are. Jeez, a lot of cold weather here. Seattle. Thumbs down for the Seahawks, though. Thumbs down for them. All right. Keep, keep shouting them out. I'll keep giving you guys shout-outs there. Um, let's go to the question, though. Are we really looking at Tom Brady, or is he really going to come to San Francisco? Okay, so this was all based on the video I did just the other day where we took what Skip Bayless said, who, of course, is, you know, undisputed Fox Sports. We know who Skip Bayless is. Where Skip Bayless said... Brady's going to test the free agent market, which is true. He is going to test the free agent market. He thinks he should go to San Francisco. So is there any sort of actual meat behind him going somewhere, being like, oh, you know that for a fact he wants to go to San Francisco? No, but that was his childhood team. He was a big Joe Montana fan. He went. He grew up in California. There's a lot of connections to San Francisco that would make a lot of sense. I think there's a 0% chance he leaves New England. So you can just mark off San Francisco Anyway, I think there's a 0% chance he goes to New England at all. Or, sorry, leaves New England. And if he was going to leave New England, I don't think he goes to San Francisco. I think he goes to, like, Tennessee or Indy or another team like that, Tampa Bay. You know, someone like that, not San Francisco. We love Jimmy G. We're fine with Jimmy G. Okay, um, how confident should Niner fans be? Well, here's the deal. I'm confident. I think we're going to win. I think we have all the right weapons to win this football game. But at the same time, this is a very good Chiefs team. And I think that the Vegas odds right now are Chiefs minus one and a half. Perhaps my favorites. Sounds about right. You have Patrick Mahomes. You know he's better overall than Jimmy Garoppolo. Quarterbacks tend to be the outcome in this game. But I would look at our defense and go, we have the best defense in the league. If there was a defense that could slow down, slow down Patrick Mahomes, it would be our defense. And so with that, I do feel confident. I think it's the Super Bowl, and anything can happen, and the majority of Super Bowls the past, what, 10 years have been nose, I mean, uh, nail biters down through the wire, so it's going to be close. I think it'll be a shootout. I think our Niners win here in the end. How about this deal that right here? These are sweet. I'm picking one of these up very, very soon, and you can do it right now if you want to get one of these Super Bowl uh, shirts. Look at that. Faithful and everything. Chatsports.com slash 49ERSSB, so 49ers SB to get the Super Bowl hat, the Super Bowl t-shirt, all the Super Bowl gear right now. Link in the description and the hoodie. I did not see the hoodie. Those of you guys in Toronto, get the hoodie. Chatsports.com slash 49ers SB for Super Bowl to get in on all these deals. We have them every single week. Great deals here on the channel. Go ahead and check those out. We'll keep going to some questions here. Ant Miller asked, do you think Mostert will have another breakout game or will it be in Jimmy G's hands? I think he's going to have a breakout game. Kansas City is better against the run than people realize. They're actually rated in the top 10 overall in terms of run defense. I think Mostert has another big game, but this is going to come down to Jimmy G. This will not be a repeat of the Packer game on Sunday where Jimmy G has what, 7 for 8 for 50-something yards, he will have to throw the football, and that's where you go, listen, we've seen him throw the football many, many times this year, we've seen him throw the football in shootout games, like the two Arizona games, like the New Orleans Saints games, four touchdowns in all three of those games, we know he can do it, but he's going to have to do it this game, Green Bay, turn right around, hand the football off, they were fine, they didn't need him to run the football, they are to uh, throw the football, they will need him to throw on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, I think he's going to be okay, Mostert will have 100 yards rushing, I truly believe that, but this is in Jimmy G's hands, as every Super Bowl is, right? Name a Super Bowl in recent memory where the quarterback was not the most important player on an offense. I can't name one, right? I mean, maybe the uh, Patriots-Rams Super Bowl in Atlanta was not big-time quarterback play, but besides that, they've all been come down to who's what the better quarterback, so Jimmy G's got to be really good. Um, the Geek Freak, who's a... Uh, a regular here on the channel asked, the defensive player we should be worried about the most is a Honey Badger. He might snag a pick off Jimmy Garoppolo. I would not be shocked if Jimmy G throws a pick in this game. At all. At all. I would not be surprised if he throws an interception in this game. And yeah, the Honey Badger is probably someone who would probably be right there to pick him off. Honey Badger has had a really great year. Tyron Matthews has been really, really good. Uh, ball hawking safety. He moves around. He can play in the slot. He comes up and loads the box and run defense. He's a guy they got to keep an eye out. But I would put a bet right now if you want to prop bet the uh, Super Bowl or just bet the Super Bowl in general, bet on Jimmy Garoppolo throwing at least one pick. I think he's just bound to do it. Doesn't mean we're going to lose, but I bet you he throws one overall. Okay, um, there we go. How about this? We are almost, I think it's 13,000 subscribers, might be 14,000 subscribers. 
We're almost at 15,000 subscribers. You've not subscribed yet? Click the little red subscribe button. It's right down below. The more subs, the more videos, and it's Super Bowl week, right? Come on, if you're not subscribed to the 49er channel, Super Bowl week, what are you doing with your life right now? Subscribe, that way we can keep growing the channel and keep giving you guys some great content here, as they always do at Chat Sports. Um, this is a really cool logo, the Darth Vader. This is awesome. Ken Flynn, do we go pass run up front, then run pass to do to control the clock once ahead? Um, yeah, although I think we're going to run the football a lot early on. Now, I said earlier, Jimmy Garoppolo got to throw his way to a victory. Yes, that's true, but he's not going to come out slinging. They're still going to have a nice balanced attack like Kyle, Kyle Shanahan wants to do. Remember this. Super Bowl um, back in 2016 when Shanahan was the OC in Atlanta, the reason they lost that Super Bowl was mainly because when they were up 28-3 at halftime, they stopped running the football. So Kyle Shanahan has learned, when you get a lead, run the football. And he did that against Green Bay. I think that happens again. If we're lucky enough to get a lead against the, the Kansas City Chiefs, you will see them run the ball more. But it's not going to be to the tune of 46 carries like they did for 200-something yards against Green Bay. It'll be a little less than that. And Jimmy G will have to boot action out of it a lot more and still throw the football. Because it's not going to be a one-sided blowout. We're not going to blow out the Kansas City Chiefs. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be a shootout. Running the football will keep the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands. That's important, but you are still got to throw it there. So, yes, I think it'll be pass run even. And then, obviously, once you, you get a lead, then you've got to run the football for the majority of that game. Uh, Tristan asks, how many receptions will we have? Huge fan of the channel, brother. Listen, Tristan, I'm a huge fan of you. I appreciate you for liking the channel and all you guys for in our comments. We're blowing up right now on YouTube. Um... How many interceptions will we have? I hope one. I think we're lucky to get one. Mahomes does not throw an interception all postseason. I think eight touchdowns, no picks. He just doesn't throw interceptions at all. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback the 49ers have faced so far this year, and they played Drew Brees, they played Aaron Rodgers, and they played Lamar Jackson. Mahomes is the best, and you have your work cut out for him, but it's a defense that can beat him, right? It's the best defense in the National Football League. I would like to see one. I'd like to see Sherman get one, wouldn't you? Like, that'd be perfect if Richard Sherman gets a pick here in this Super Bowl and just to prove all the haters who think he's too old wrong. I think we get one, but I also think we're lucky if we get that one because Mahomes is not throwing the football away literally at all in this postseason. 